Did you know that my cell phone is behaving as a cantilevered beam? You should know because you see the shadow right there, right? It's cantilevered and it's a beam, okay? Alright, so this is the um, problem that you sent me. Um, I, I really enjoy this problem. It's very nice. It's, it's not statics at all. It's just general physics. And the most important thing to note here in this problem is that um, we have some black A with some weight A and black B with some weight B that have some unknown masses. We're given the spring constant. These springs are the same, they have the same spring constants, 1200 newtons per meter. Spring A, which is this one, its stretched length is 380 millimeters. Spring B, which is the second spring, okay, its stretched length is 280 millimeters, and the angle of incline is equal to data, 30 degrees. I'm going to write FS1 here for force on the spring 1. And FS2 for force on spring 2. Okay. Uh, we have to know some basic things back from general physics. And we know that F is equal to KX. That's how they introduce it to us. KX. But we can put DS. Where DS is going to denote the displacement of the spring. That it's final length minus its initial length. Okay. All right, so we are our frame ends right here, so I have to do everything in this frame, okay? So the next important thing is to note that this black A right here is being acted upon by a force of a spring, which force? Spring one. This one right here is being acted upon by another force, force on spring two. These two forces are, of course, um, they're acting. E they're not acting equal and opposite, but they're acting opposite to these, to this mass A. Okay, we have to know too that since this block is being pulled in both directions by spring one and spring two, these springs are behaving as tension members. Okay, the other thing to note is that of course this force on the spring one and force on the spring two is going to be different. They are going to be different forces, and the reason why. Is because their displacement is different, therefore um, giving us a different KDS or force. Okay, so we're going to begin by um, introducing to you. I'm going to introduce to you the format that I'm going to use. This is the given format. Well, we have already the first format. This is the given. Right, so we have given, given. Okay, so we have to find. What is it that we have to find? We have to find the Mass on block A and the mass on block B given their spring constants, the angle data of incline, and their stretched length, where this is spring A, this is spring B. Okay, so we have to find the masses of A. And B. Excuse my handwriting, but we have to find the masses of A and B. So how do we find the masses of A and B? We just do some physics, some Newtonian physics, some general, very general, very basic physics. And we begin like we always begin, since just like we've been beginning since physics one is by drawing free body diagram. So what I'm going to draw here is not part of the diagram; it's just to serve to us as reference. All right. So I'm going to draw here. Black A. This is black A. And this is being acted upon by a force on the spring here. The other force here, of course, this is the force on spring one. This right here is the force on spring two. And also, some of this weight is actually perpendicular to, you have to say the weight perpendicular, and some of the weight is um, parallel to the plane. So I'm going to write here weight. Parallel. These two bars indicate parallel. And it's going to be the weight of A. Subscript A for weight of black A parallel to the surface. This is, of course, a known force A. But as you will see in our future calculation, we do not need to consider these two forces. Okay, so my uh, 
coordinate system is going to consist of x and y as shown. And we're going to draw, because this is data, we're going to draw, or not draw because we already drew our free body diagram. We have this acting by force of spring 1, force of spring 2, weight parallel, and normal force, and of course weight perpendicular. Okay, S taking some of the force in the x direction, we have the force on spring 1 acting in the negative x direction, the force on spring 2 acting in the positive x direction that we have chosen relative to our coordinate axis, and of course the weight parallel to the surface. We learned from physics 1 the weight is given by the sine component. Okay, we're going to draw weight A times the sine of the sum of the forces equal to zero since we are taking statics and there is no movement, no acceleration whatsoever. Okay, so this is free body diagram for block A. Okay, so we're going to go to block B right now. So block B, we're going to draw our little incline. Okay, we already established a coordinate system it's like this as shown. Okay, we're going to draw block B now. Block B is being acted upon by this force. Okay, this is block B. It's being acted upon by force on spring 2. Okay, it's being pulled in tension by spring 2. We have another force here. Which force is this one? Well, this force here is the component of the force of the weight that is parallel to the incline given by WB. Okay, parallel. Okay, this is block B. So, what we're going to do is find the sum of the forces. His first law, no movement. In the x direction, we have negative FS2, that's the force on the spring on the negative x direction, plus the force of the weight acting parallel to the plane sign data in the positive x direction, of course this is equal to zero. So now as you see we have come up with two linearly independent equations. Of course you have to make sure these equations are linearly independent. If they're not linearly independent, we learn from matrix algebra, we are not going to be able to solve these um, equations. Alright, so I'm going to Draw equation one from free. I'm gonna write equation one from free body diagram one, and equation one is equal to minus FS one plus FS two plus WA sine data equals zero. Equation two. Equation two is minus FS two plus WB sine data that equals zero. Okay. So how do we calculate the force on spring 1? Easy. We just write force on spring 1. We follow Hooke's law. K, 1200 newtons per meter. Include our units times the displacement. So what is the initial length of the spring? Well, we know the initial length of the spring <coughs> is equal to 250 millimeters. Okay. So for spring 1, its final length is 380 millimeters or 0.38 meters minus its initial unstretched length, 0.25 meters. Following Hooke's law right here, we get that this is 156 newtons force on spring 2, 1200 is per meter. The final length of spring B which is acting on spring number two. Black B acting on spring two is, I believe, final left, 280. Okay, so that's 0.28 meters. Of course, you have to do unit conversion from millimeters to meter because our constant K is in newtons per meter. Okay, on stretch is 0.25 meters. We do this math and we get 36 newtons, okay? So force on spring 1 is pulling with a tension force of 156 newtons. Force on spring 2, 36 newtons, okay? So we have to do substitute this for FS1. Substitute this for FS2, okay? When you do that, you're going to get two equations, okay? Not new, two new equations. You're going to have the same equation. We already solved for FS1 and FS2. 
FS1 is equal to minus 156, all right? Newtons of force on spring one acting in the negative x direction, plus 36 newtons of force acting in the um, spring two in the positive x direction, and that's equal to plus weight a sine data. That equals zero because there is no acceleration. Minus 36. Of course, this is the um, uh, equation corresponding to number two. Three by the number two. Plus the weight of B times the sine of theta, and that equals zero. We know data. All we have to do is solve for WA, WB. When we do this, we get that WA is equal to the weight of block A, 120 newtons, of course. WB, the weight of block B, is 72 newtons. And it does not take that much statics that you know you have to divide by G, 9.81 meters per second squared, in order to find the mass of block A and B. And the final mass will be, I'll give you three significant figures. The mass of black A is 24.5 kilograms. The mass of black B is 7.34 kilograms.